Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to the inside of the Rivian R1T and welcome to the first ever Rate Your Charge weekly update. What we've done is we've started Rate Your Charge, I'm sure many of you know, where when you get to a charging station, you take a video, you take a photo, and you tag us on Twitter with your experience. Well, we're not just letting that data go to waste, we're actually compiling everyone's check-ins in a weekly report, and then uh, you know, sort of sending it out to everyone. So I just posted it on Twitter, here's my YouTube update, and I'm thinking uh, we might have some better ways to distribute this content as we go on, but I'd love to at least share with you our first ever Rate Your Charge weekly report and uh, would love your feedback as to what metrics you think we should or shouldn't include going forwards. I started Rate Your Charge almost exactly one month ago, sort of born out of frustration, if you will. Uh, a lot of you know I go on a lot of electric car road trips. I'm constantly trying new charging hardware, new charge point operators. And what we've sort of seen a trend is uh, going towards is basically unreliable DC fast charging. That's been my experience in many cases. You know, it's sort of the case where even if you have to worry about if the next charger on your road trip is going to have some kind of issue, that's just unacceptable. It's 2023. We put a man on the moon. We can make charging work. But unfortunately, I would say almost every public DC fast charging provider has had a multitude of reliability issues that really leaves EV drivers wanting more confidence. You know, at first when EVs launched, it was all about the range. How far can my car go? Oh, I don't know if I'll make it. Pretty much any electric car now can go as far as you need it to go. In my opinion, what matters more is can you reliably and quickly charge that vehicle up to get to your end destination. And so rather than range anxiety, it's been replaced with charger anxiety, at least for me. And uh, so that's why I was flying home after the quick the Christmas week from hell. There's a whole video on that. And uh, I was flying home from Florida. As soon as the plane hit the runway, I'm like, you know what? Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while, but I'm like, let's launch this charger raider system. And we came up with Rate Your Charge, and right now it's very primitive. It's just a Twitter page where, uh, you know, we have hundreds and hundreds and thousands of users that are going to charging stations every day, sharing their experiences in small video clips or photos, and then we're retweeting them. My colleague Ryan Castle, who is now on the Rate Your Charge project, has been collaborating with our users and collecting all of the data to basically factor into a nice weekly report for everyone to see. What's really cool is I actually just shared this report on Twitter and I created a LinkedIn page for Rate Your Charge just a few minutes ago. And we already have the head of charging at GM, the head of charging at Stellantis, Rivian charger integrating people already following that page. It's only a few minutes old. So we know there's a massive hunger for data when it comes to real world user experiences out in the field. And I'm really thrilled that Rate Your Charge has been as successful as it has been. Almost 6,000 followers on Twitter in just a few weeks, hundreds, thousands of check-ins since we started. Just in the last week alone, we had 104 check-ins just over the last seven days. And that's what this report is based off of. So if you guys are interested in more, you know, sort of real world charging reports, we might start a separate channel where we can share our users submitted videos, um, or we might keep it here on reviews. I'm not totally sure. We have enough channels in my opinion, but I don't want to clog up this channel, keeping it all about charging data, but at least that's what I'm interested in. So let's just say for the next few Saturdays on this channel, we'll make it the Rate Your Charge weekly update. So now you get the idea of why I started Rate Your Charge, what we're doing with it, now I wanna tell you all about the data because that is the most fascinating part. Our first newsletter is a little bit clunky. We kind of slap this thing together. It's not visually great, but it is a really uh, informative piece of information that we've never had before. This is all brand new. I also wanna mention that if you are interested in tagging Rate Your Charge or at least creating a check-in, we now have a new Google form for those of you not on Twitter. We'll eventually open up to other software platforms or social media platforms and even an app at some point in the future. If you're an app developer, reach out. We need your help. And uh, basically, I'll, I'll leave the Google form linked below for those of you who don't want to use Twitter. But let's start with what we're doing in this newsletter. 
So we had 104 check-ins this week. And uh, of those 104 check-ins, we've sort of broken them into different categories. And what we really are trying to rate with Rate Your Charge is charger reliability based off of ChargePoint operator. So Tesla, ChargePoint, EVgo, Electrify America, Shell Recharge, you know, as the backend systems operator, Blink, you name it. But we really broke it down, at least for this one, uh, in terms of Tesla, ChargePoint, EVgo, Electrify America, and other and uh, in first place for reliability is Tesla, sort of no surprise. We all know that you can roll up to a Tesla supercharger and very easily, you know, A, from your app, understand how many chargers are actually available, and it's pretty simple to actually get in, get charged, and get out. We did have two instances this week, though, of people having poor experiences, or what we're rating as a bad check-in at Tesla superchargers. And I believe one of them had to do with a connector that had faulty pins in it that wouldn't actually go into a vehicle. And the other was getting very inconsistent charging speeds, almost like the charger itself was failing. And so those are two listed as bad check-ins, but 16 totally positive, no issue check-ins. Uh, by far the best experience um, that our users had this week was using the Tesla supercharger network. Now, when are they going to open up their network? I don't know the exact day or the exact time frame, but I do know that Tesla's very close to launching CCS compatibility in the US with that Magic Dock situation. And all I can say is that's going to be a great thing. Let's hope because I cannot wait to get this thing, uh, get CCS cars charging on the Tesla network. It's going to be amazing. Uh, number two was actually ChargePoint. We didn't receive many charge point check-ins because again, we're only factoring DC fast charger check-ins here. We received a ton of charge point level two stations. And one of the problems we keep seeing over and over from our users with charge point is charging stations that have been purchased by a third party or a government entity or government funded uh, projects that have gone in but no one's bothered to set up the chargers. We keep finding check-ins of a row of charge point chargers and they're just sorry, unavailable, not set up yet. Uh, you know, credit card reader, no processing. And that's a bit of a shame. I'd wonder how many of those installs were actually funded with public dollars, our money, and haven't been turned on. And that's, you know, charge point builds great hardware, the best back end but I really am a little bit annoyed with the business model because it leaves EV drivers hanging. You know, you can basically get all the government money to put in charge point chargers and then never turn them on. And that's a, a topic we're gonna be digging into. But in terms of charge point DC fast charger check-ins, we received six. I really hope you guys uh, check in more, of course, and for those watching this video, submit the forms and get on Twitter and tag us because we want as much data as possible but ChargePoint came in second place, 83% good check-ins. We had five positive and one negative check-in. Uh, the bad check-in, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but we will have all of that on Rate Your Charge there. EVgo came in third place. We had quite a few EVgo check-ins, but not the highest, but certainly a good amount. And 64% uh, were good check-ins. One report, this is the first report where someone got to a station and could not charge. And that is, you know, showing up as red on this graph and getting to a charger and not being able to charge your vehicle. That's worst case scenario. We really, really hate that. And so uh, sad to see there was one report of this with EVgo, but at least it's just one, three reports of slower charging speeds. And we try and narrow it down with the poster to make sure it's not battery temperature related. At the end of the day, we're, we're getting public info from public users. I feel like our user base is really knowledgeable, especially with Ryan communicating with a lot of the check-in uh, people. You know, if there is an issue, we really try and figure out why that issue was there. And so there were three check-ins, mostly due to limited charging speeds, not due to battery pack temperature. And then we broke the fourth category into other, and I'm gonna sort of brush over it a little bit, but out of all of the check-ins that we've had on other networks, this could be Blink, this could be you know Shell Recharge using XYZ Charger, um, these 25% of them, people were not able to charge. And that's totally unacceptable. Imagine one of out, of out of every four times you're gonna charge your car, you have to leave that station not being able to put fuel in it crazy. And so that just paints the picture for really how bad the public state of charging is here in America. Just awful. And then we come down to the last place. And actually a bit of surprise for me is Electrify America coming in in fifth. 
we had by far the most amount of check-ins on Electrify America, which shows people are using this network more than others. They're definitely in tune with what's going on more than others. And really, if you're road tripping a CCS vehicle, it is the only network you can rely on. I just took this Rivian on a road trip. Some of you may have seen to get my Twizy and I had, you know, almost some kind of issue at every Electrify America station, mostly derated chargers, some offline, some software bugs. The app was really bad. I had to quit out every time and reopen because it wouldn't remember my new location. Just unbelievable amount of bugs. And it's not just me finding it. The data here shows so many people are finding it. Only 57% of check-ins that we received at Electrify America actually were positive with no issue. Only 57%. That's near as makes no difference, half. Half the time you get to a station, it's good. Half the time you get to the station, it's either bad or a complete fail. That's crazy. We actually had six reports just in the last seven days of people getting to an Electrify America charging station and not being able to charge their vehicle. This again is the largest CCS network in terms of coverage in the US and our users are getting to these chargers and they're not able to charge. Insane, crazy stories out there. Um, we actually received 19 instances of app inaccuracy this week across all the networks. And that means that when you pull up your app, Electrify America app, there were 12, the majority here. You know, it'd say station one available. You'd go, great, I'm gonna roll up to station one. You get there, it either doesn't work or it shows as unavailable. We actually had one crazy instance, and this we've noted many times, I cannot believe this is still happening, where an entire station in Withville, Virginia, which is an extremely necessary corridor for going through West Virginia, basically a, a high travel corridor, a very important corridor, and the only CCS charging station, regardless of network, on this stretch. Um, I guess the sheets that the station was at was going under renovation, and the whole station was ripped offline, fenced off. No one could get there. EA knew about it because it showed in PlugShare, but their own app was showing that all the stations were available. So we, of course, retweeted it on Rate Your Charge. We know all the charge point operators follow Rate Your Charge on Twitter. EA saw that, of course, and within just a few hours right after posting, that issue was taken care of. But how crazy is it that they can't even get their own app right? And again, it's not just Electrify America. We had three instances with EVgo, two instances with Tesla, actually, um, where both of those two issues were not logged in the app or in the car, which is a little bit surprising, but still crazy. That shouldn't be happening. And we've had one from Shell Recharge and one from Blink. So really a major problem. Uh, basically, the state of charging needs to get better. I see nothing really being done to make it better except kind of complain about it. And so where the first place to start is gathering the data. Let's see if this is truly a problem and then actually get people involved. So I'm really thrilled that Rate Your Charge is being able to gather all of this data. Thanks to you guys for checking in. I always check in when I get to DC Chargers. I hope you all do the same as well. We're gonna keep this going. Every Saturday, you're gonna have a report from us, uh, either through Twitter, LinkedIn, email. Eventually, we'll get that going. And uh, I'm just loving the data. It really shows us that what I'm complaining about totally transparently, I know I constantly complain about charging. Um, it's not unwarranted. Our users, you guys, EV drivers, are finding the same thing out there. So let's keep it going. Let's check in, tag rate your charge on Twitter. Just a quick little update from my side. Uh, would really love to hear your feedback as to what metrics we should include visually. Maybe some of you are designers, you can help us make this look a little bit nicer. And then of course, you know, just tag rate your charge. That's all I can do to ask. Post a video, post some photos, let us know the location. Let us know if it was good or bad. If it's bad, tell us why and everything will end up in these reports for you every week, every Saturday morning. So thanks again for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. That's a Saturday morning rate your charge check-in, and we'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.